Uh, let me see how much I can explain, Gary. You jump in where you need to. The latest is we heard from the executive. Was this one of the executive? That's the guy. The, the executive producer of In Plain Sight, the Mary McCormick vehicle. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you're following along, Eric has gotten a job with them, and we basically got it for him. And everything's going along smoothly. We get a letter this morning. <laughs> That the guy, the producer, is pulling his hair out again. Oh, no. I thought everything was set. What did it say in the letter, Gary? Uh, Eric needs to reschedule the dates. He's having trouble getting his oxygen. And the only, he's only got two dates available, which happen to be the last two days of their shooting, oh. which I can read between the lines. A producer, when you're dealing with a question mark like Eric, the last thing you want to do Super is go down to the here. last two yeah. days because you don't know what's going to happen. If I was that producer, I would bail on the Eric the Midget concept. We've been telling him to bail all along. Unless on those two days he's got a complete backup plan. I would bail. I yeah. mean, you could just see this is a very, very what difficult... What does he mean? He's, like, like, he mean they booked him, he had his dates. He seemed very happy and satisfied it, with everything. It wasn't explained in the email. Just that he he goes, Gary, I want you to see what I got from one of my showrunners. Yeah. And that's ex what exactly what I said is what it said. It said that Eric contacted them. He's not available on the dates he said he was going to be available. He's only available because of his uh, this oxygen supply oh delivery. God. Oh, my God. Now, first of all, oxygen... It's free. It can't be that constant. Con but everybody's got it. It's not like a hard <laughs> thing to get a hold of. I'm going to guess that Eric's going to tell you that because of whatever assistance he's on, he has to go through a certain company and has to be paid a certain way. Oh, my God. And then you got insulted because Eric sent you a letter. I'm done with him, and I'm not fucking around Go at ahead. all. Really? I'm really done with this little shit. Because so, by the way, just to finish this, Eric's had three months to get oxygen. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. And, and I really mean this, Robin. Okay. Are you looking at me? No good deed goes unpunished with this guy. He really is a miserable little fuck. So I get I get an email from the owner of the Viper Club in L.A. saying, hey, when Eric comes to L.A. to shoot his show, I'd love to hire him for a gig. Okay. So my job is I, so I, I forward it to Eric. Right. He sends me back the nastiest fucking note that says, I always knew you didn't listen. Howard said you were a moron. Now it's apparent. Everybody knows I'm shooting in New Mexico. If you kept your fucking eyes open, you would know. Go oh, back to playing idiots. solitaire and fall asleep in your chair. I'm like, fuck you. I, like, first of all, I don't know for his driving. Maybe he wants to drive through L.A. and do the gig. Maybe next time he's in L.A. So you know what? You every, just forwarded him the letter. Right. Uh, without it's none a, of your business what else he's and doing. And so every, it, with his thinking, right, when the guy from In Plain Sight called me, I should have said, Eric lives in Sacramento. He can't make that trip. And then <laughs> fucking thrown it away. Right. Everyone knows I'm in Sacramento. That's I think right. His handicap is that he's a little fucking prick. <laughs> so you're not talking to him anymore? I, if he's on the air right now, I'll talk to him. But, but anybody no, who sends not, me, he's not on. Anybody who sends me anything for him, I will decide what to do with it. Right. Which means throw, throw, I'll throw it in the garbage. Right. Hope he never gets another game. I mean, I was being nice. Yeah. <laughs> he's funny. He never but ceases to, to be get funny. angry about it. He angry. Fi he finally got an acting job on a major show. And now he's going to fuck it up because he can't get his oxygen tank, which he's had three months to get. Yeah, the whole time we've been talking, he could have been ordering oxygen. I know he has a tough Eric life, but he really he really is a professional victim. Right. It's it's always, it's not my fault that I can't do this and I can't do that, I can't do this. And he, everybody should understand hmm. all of my problems. He really is a can't do kind of guy. Right. <laughs> I can't do. Eric, the blown mouth midget. We got to get him on the air. You don't have a number on him, do you? I think we do. Let me let's, see. I, let's just uh, let's ask him what's going on. Come on, I'm curious. Real quick, Rob, and then we get right to him. Okay. I mean, you're you're curious, right? I love Eric's all right. saga. Yeah. Eric, the obnoxious. What does he need an oxygen tank for anyway? What is he part fish? I think it's a just in case uh -huh. kind of thing because he's going on a plane or something. And he couldn't get that together for three months. Well, you know what? we He went back and forth about how long it takes to get it, and then Johnny was saying it didn't take that long. <laughs> but Johnny also said they were werewolves. <laughs> In New Mexico. <laughs> In New Mexico. <laughs> if Gary can get them on fast. You want to um, You want to take a break? Hey, I'll do a live commercial. Yeah, something. do a live one. While I'm waiting for Eric. Might as well knock something out while we're doing it on it. It's the new year. Time to make resolutions that will help improve your life, your business, the whole deal. There's an easy way you can start saving time and money in a matter of minutes. Use Stamps.com. With Stamps.com, you can buy and print official U.S. postage using your own computer and printer. You'll never waste time going to the post office again or waste money leasing a postage meter. It's so easy to get started. You can print postage for any letter or package the instant you need it. And the mailman will pick it up. Right now, they have a special offer. 
if you use offer code 100, of course. A no-risk trial plus a $110 bonus offer, including a digital scale, and $55 in free postage. Don't wait. Go to stamps.com before you do anything else. Click on the radio microphone at the top of the homepage and type in 100. That's stamps.com, enter 100. Any word from Eric? No. You got got a couple of commercials? Yeah, let's do one. All right, do it. What happened? No, Eric? Just a voicemail. Uh, but he may call back before. You know how he is. He'll call back when it's most inconvenient. Right. Yeah, he'll call back and I'll be in the middle yeah, of something Yeah, we'll be else. signing off. He'll want to yeah. do another half And then he'll be show. mad, by the way, that he you, we called him. Right. He called us back and you fucking ignored him. Yeah, not understanding. So you know what? If he calls back, just say forget it. No. Really? You want no, to talk to him? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. If, if he calls back. What? We have him. Oh, you have him. Okay. Oh. Put him up now. Yeah, this will be good. <laughs> Let's first ask him about the oxygen tank, and then you can talk about your letter. <laughs> I'm so excited. You know, it's so funny because I was I, I read the email to Mary, and I said, "I don't. It's my day off. Why am I so mad?" <laughs> but it, I fucking I was so mad. I wanted to fly out there and kill him. Eric, the pathetic, sick and shit, and lame ass, loud mouth, defensive, stupid, annoying, screwed up, retarded, game jackass. Where is he? I don't see him. I'm 19. 19? Okay. Hey, Eric. Good morning. Morning. <laughs> hey, Eric, I'm curious because there's a couple of things going on. We got a letter from the guy from In Plain Sight. Yes. And, like, they're pulling their hair out of their head. Like, you committed to dates and everything, and they got it all together for you, and then you just recently sent them a letter saying you can't get your oxygen tank together after three months, and that you're now changing all the dates... And you're like pushing them right to the wall because that that your availability is the end of their schedule. Is that true? I didn't send them any letter. That's not true. Oh, okay. did, he, did you send them an email? No. How did they get informed the, of this? The only email I sent yesterday at all to anyone involved with the show with a reply to John Strauss asking me if. The date of my doctor appointment had changed. I said, no, it has not. It's still the 19th. So, you so why do they think you can't make the dates? I don't know. Isn't I mean, there something about your oxygen tank not being available? It's There's a little bit of a hiccup on that, but trying to work it out. Wow. Oh. Uh, oh, wait, I'll read you this email from the guy. Tell me if if I've got this wrong, because... Did you talk to someone there? I've talked to several people, not through email. All but... right, well, well, not email, but you've, you've gotten in touch with people. You're giving them scheduling problems. Well, between Johnny and I, we're trying to work that out. See, so, in other words, he committed to dates, and all I know is... They're under the impression that he's not holding to those dates. Right. Well, but the thing is, you said you wrote them, and he says, oh, I didn't write them. Like, he doesn't right. cause them any problem. Yeah. He's just uh, stuck on, I didn't write it. Right. Have you told him in some way, smoke signals or something, <laughs> that you have to change the dates? No. The, let, me, they, let me read you this letter we got from them. Here, Eric, listen to me. Help. <laughs> <laughs> this is from We're John Strauss. With Eric Can I just say before you read it, right, John right. Strauss, when he was on the show before we went on vacation, was very specific that he needed ironclad dates by January yeah. 1st. Yeah. Right. Okay. Help. He, meaning Eric, he has called twice today, <laughs> pushing back his start date due to complications with getting an oxygen concentrator. He now says he's only available to us on our last two days of shooting. So you didn't say that, Eric? No. Oh. It, by the way, dates changing, that was on their end. Yeah. Last what? week. Gary, you're not buying it? No. Uh, Why? Because they run a business and he's Eric. Right. Gary, you fucking hardly pay a fucking attention. Shut up, eight face, and play solitaire. <laughs> now, by the way, speaking of that, let's get on that. You sent Gary the nastiest note, and I think you made a mistake with that. 
you know, Gary just gets mail for you and he forwards it to you. You write him a scathing letter back saying, Gary, you're not paying attention. Everyone knows that I'm taping in New Mexico and not Los Angeles. Gary doesn't give a shit. And you know what Gary told me he's going to do from now on? He's going to take all those emails for you and uh, throw them in the garbage. Eric, you, with your logic, when in plain sight called, I should have said, well, Eric lives in Sacramento. He can't be in New Mexico. I'll make decisions for you. I don't know whether you're driving through Los Angeles or I don't know whether you'd want to double on back and go to Los Angeles to make some extra money. I don't decide your fucking social calendar. Gary's had it with you. I really have. He said that's well, the last time he even sends you anything that comes yeah, through. Why would I help you? In, in other words, I have to now think for you? I said your, ha your handicap is that you're a prick. <laughs> your handicap is you're a jackass. Shut up Ouch. and listen to me. <laughs> Let me reply. <laughs> I have an agent just like Howard. I'm not the one that handles that shit, Gary. Email that shit to Johnny, oh. not to me. That, but but, wait not, but Eric, that's not even that's what you not said. Appropriate. That, I mean, even if that's a fucking retarded logic too. But your logic wasn't like, hey, I don't handle this. Your logic was, you're a jackass who doesn't pay attention. You know I'm not going to be in L.A. that day. And Gary doesn't work for you, Eric. He doesn't have to send it, your email to your agent. He sends it to you. You get it and you send it to your agent. Right. Like you can't hit a button. Oh, even, he John, even Johnny was like, why the fuck is he emailing that to you? That do you do you not realize that Johnny tells you what you want to hear? You that Johnny thinks you're as big a joke as anybody? No, he doesn't get that. Why'd you have to tell him? That's like John telling a little kid there's no Santa Claus. Johnny agrees with you because it's better than arguing with you. Johnny thinks it's funny. When you complain about me to Johnny, he goes, yeah, that Gary's an asshole because it's funny and he doesn't want to deal with fighting with you. A lot of people think you're an asshole. That's true. But in this case to you, I wasn't. I was trying to be nice, trying to help you make some extra money. And by the way, facilitating all these emails from the people from In Plain Sight. Yeah, right Gary doesn't really care. He's doing it to be a nice guy. I've done as much work for you to get on this dumbass show as Johnny has. And it's still not going to happen. Because now the guy's pulling his head. For some reason, they're under the impression that Eric's not... I don't think available. He, I don't think Eric's being truthful. Whether how many calls did you make to them yesterday, Eric? I only talked to them a couple of times. Okay, so now it went from one to two. Right. They, they said two. He said I only called them once. Now it's a couple of times. Right. Maybe. Oh. They don't care, Eric. You're you're already a big pain in the ass for them. And and it's not that big a part. Hmm. Maybe at the most three times once. <laughs> at the most. Eric, you called a major production three times over a little bit part. Oh. Are you claiming they asked you to change the dates? Last week, hmm. the email said tentatively the 24th and the fucking 25th. Wow, what a pain in the, the ass. Day, shut up and let me finish my goddamn sentence. <laughs> you are so ungrateful. You're just really the most ungrateful little shit there is. They should get Marty the midget. Yeah, he can act. And he's a nice guy. And you know what? He can get there on his own and he shows up when you tell him. I'm trying to get Eric work, but it's it's not it's working. It's very yeah. difficult. It's making me look bad. I can't imagine what those in plain sight people think of me. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're going to lose this role to Marty the midget. And Marty can breathe. <laughs> I'm not going to lose this role to anyone. But right. Let me finish. It's, true, it's true. Who could be him? <laughs> There's only one of him. But, Eric, you've got to show up on the days you promised to show up. I am trying to fucking explain that. But you are still. I, it's in taking love. too long. You're in love with your own damn voice, and you're not letting me speak. All right, go ahead. Explain to me. Are you working on the days they asked you to work that you agreed to on the air? Simple yes or no. The last person I talked to yesterday with Johnny on a three-way call was the guy said that be there on the, leave on the 23rd, tape on the 24th, Possibly either leave on the 24th because they condensed it down to one day of shooting. Okay. And that was them changing, not me. Okay. Changing. So you're in. 
and <laughs> leave either that day or stay that extra night and leave the next day. Okay, and there's no problem with your oxygen tank? I'm, I'm working on that. There's a hiccup. You I said there was a hiccup, so what's a hiccup, Eric? The concentrator constantly will be here the morning of the 23rd. Why not so, get it there earlier? Because it can't. It's a two-week process. Oh, boy. If I'm, if I'm See, in plain sight, I'm I don't, so long. But here's the thing. If I'm in plain sight, I'm out of this. The other thing Aren't is with Eric... we talking about this before the end of the year? Yeah. yeah. And the thing with Eric that I never understand is... It, I'm it, telling you, I know he's a, cutting that concentrator. I don't know what a concentrator is, but he's cutting it close. It's a two-week process for him. Right. I don't know that it's a two-week process. Right. But he still had plenty of time to but already it's have a, it. It's a two-week order process. So why did you I order? Okay, we, we had you on December. Four, we had you on December fourteenth. Why didn't you order it then? Because you could only rent the damn thing for a week at a time. Right, but you knew the week you needed. Not until this week. I don't buy it. So well, don't we. When when I last spoke. If I'm in plain sight, I'm getting out of this. Liza Minnelli is easier to deal with uh, than Eric. And she has more lines. Gary's actually right about this. Because when John Strauss was on, he gave the week. He said it would be two days within this week. Right. The week of the 17th And so he could have ordered. So he of course he could have ordered. Yeah. Thank you. He said the 18th to the 27th. That's more than a week. I don't know, man. If I'm the producer... So you order it for two oh, weeks. Right. If I'm the producer oh. of In Plain Sight, Eric, I'm out of this. No offense. It's Go too... fucking back and listen to that conversation. All right. Well, do you, listen... Do you, do you not think that... Can I ask you a question? Do you think you're easy or difficult to work with? I don't think I'm difficult to work with. You ought to go back and listen to these mm. tapes. They got three calls from you yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and, and by the way, there's you know there's got to be thirty people in the cast. Yeah, there are plenty of guest stars right. every week. That Mary they have McCormick's to deal with. the star of the show. She doesn't even carry on like this. She should be like, I can't get my concentrator. But believe me, the moving parts, you know, the people who come in and out. Eric's the most difficult. Meanwhile, we've totally forgotten about the fact that he's afraid of werewolves, and there are werewolves in New Mexico. <laughs> and it, wh is that I all worked out? I wonder if it's a full moon during the time that Eric's there. Did they ever satisfy you that they have to leave, keep all bears and werewolves away from you? Has anyone told you you believe bullshit? All right. Well, you're the one who said it. I, I'm no. going to leave, Eric, but I'm going to leave with this. In a business where people are used to dealing with the most difficult of the difficult, you have been deemed fucking difficult. Mary McCormick had twins, and she was on the set the next day. She gave birth during a scene. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't complain. Right. All right, Eric. I don't know what's going on, but trust me, you got to pull this together. How many damn times do I have to say that that werewolf shit was bullshit that Johnny put in All that right. he thought was funny, but wasn't. Yeah, but you told me you you didn't know if there were werewolves or not because you read it on IMDb. No, he read I, it on I didn't say Wikipedia. I read Wikipedia. It. <laughs> Idiot. Okay. I didn't say I read it. I said Johnny read it. Yeah, and you. But you and believed you were, it. You were asking for help. I'm just saying. All right. Thanks, Eric. Listen, I just wanted to know what was going on. Now I've got a pretty clear picture, and I, ho I wish you luck. I hope you're on the show. I'm looking forward to watching it. Right. Good luck. Thank <clears throat> you. All right. Take care, Eric. <laughs> Later. Bye. Bye. It's uh, Eric. Eric, the... Uh... <laughs> I'm a major with demands, and my IQ is very low. <clears throat> because I believe that werewolves live in New Mexico. <clears throat> I'm afraid to film in Albuquerque because werewolves get me scared. And if I see one on the set, I'm going to shit in my wheelchair. <laughs> Werewolf in New Mexico. Werewolf in New Mexico. All right, Robin.